discuss a little bit about market entry. When you're entering the United States and starting a business, you have two options. You can start from scratch, or you can purchase an existing business. Obviously, buying an existing business is easy, you would think. It does require due diligence and perhaps a lot of money up front, those are the downside. The upside is that you already have a business in place. The systems, the procedures, and the client and customer base is already there. Building a business from scratch is slower, but it may be more secure. You can pay as you go, and you can learn as you go. Now, to know more about how an Indian logistics company successfully entered the U.S. market by building up a branch office in the United States, I suggest that you, rec that you visit page 13 in your booklet. You've all received a book. You'll notice a number of scenarios, business scenarios. So page 13 will discuss building a business in the United States from the perspective of a branch of your foreign business. Now, should you buy or should you build? There's simply no right answer. Well, there is a right answer, but it depends on you. There's no answer that fits everyone. You may also enter the market in the United States by merging with another company. We do not recommend that you merge your, your Indian business with a U.S. entity, but instead that you set up a separate subsidiary, not just a branch, because the branch is part of your own, your Indian company, but that you set up a limited liability company or a uh, subsidiary corporation, and then merge those entities with the U.S. business for your joint venture. How many in this room are currently involved in a joint venture in the United States or with a U.S. company? Excellent. Any more? We have one person in this room. A joint venture is a very popular way to enter business, to enter the marketplace in the United States. It's where you establish a relationship with another company. Um, to know how the U.S. Well, turn to page 11 in your book. This is a scenario that describes how a U.S. engineering company set up profitable joint venture operations in India. Well, in this particular scenario, a production joint venture was established for Indian companies looking to enter the U.S. market. A distribution joint venture or a marketing joint venture may be more attractive. Distribution JVs and marketing JVs are good ways for Indian companies to test their products in the United States before full market entry. For example, if you have a product that you think has a good potential in the U.S. market, but you do not have the requisite understanding of the U.S. market, or you don't have the resources to commit for sales in the United States market, you may explore a joint venture with a suitable marketing organization in the U.S. to market your products. Considerations for companies entering into joint ventures? At the top of the list, joint ventures can be very tricky. It is vitally important that you enlist the services and the assistance and guidance of highly experienced attorneys and financial advisors before you enter such a joint venture. Incidentally, that is ideally something that Start Business in America one of our sponsors could help you with. How many in this room have a franchise operation in the United States? Franchises are very popular and becoming increasingly popular. Uh, can somebody name a, a very popular franchise? McDonald's? 
Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza Hut, Subway, Subway, excellent. These, this is where uh, franchises got started, but they're now spreading to clothing, upscale, uh, you know, name brand stores, and uh, in many other ways. Even business services are now developing franchise operations. My own company in the United States utilizes an accounting firm that is owned by a company in France, and they've gone throughout the United States buying up individual accounting firms and rebranding them as a franchise operation of that company. They happen to be called Fiducio. So then you have a very unusual or uh, example of a franchise that you may not have even thought of. Is your business franchisable? Can, is, it, is it a candidate for a franchise? Well, a franchise must be very highly standardized and easily replicated. In other words, what we in the United States refer to as a cookie cutter approach. You must be able to do exactly the same thing at every franchise operation. Franchising is very heavily regulated in the United States, both at the federal level and at the uh, state and local levels. At the, fed, at the federal level, the Federal Trade Commission, the FC, FTC, is the primary regulator. Let's look at direct sales. Let's imagine a scenario where you have a product or a service that you think has a good market in the United States, but you're not ready to set up an office or company in the United States to explore the market. In other words, you just want to ease in and test the waters. What can you do? You can engage a marketing service like ULG Marketing Solutions. ULG, as you recall, is a company that, that has performed the logistics successfully for our workshop series in India. And ULG can exhibit your products or services on your behalf at a trade show in the United States. They can generate leads for you and pass these leads on to you or they can complete the sales on your behalf. <coughs> Alternatively, you can travel to the U.S. and exhibit in a trade show, offer your products and services to customers directly and conclude the sales. Now, if you were to go to the United States, what kind of visa would you probably want to use? B1 business visa would be ideal, ideal for that. Now, if your sales cycle is long, requiring frequent interaction with customers, or if your sales volume has reached a point where you feel the need to set up an office in the United States, you can then establish your branch office or separate subsidiary in the United States. It's very important to understand that in the United States, according to U.S. law, a sale is a legal contract. U.S. laws regarding the sales of goods and services are aggressively enforced. Under U.S. law, you warrant that the goods you sell are of good quality and fit for their intended purpose. The United States is a very litigious society. What do I mean by litigious? We have too many attorneys who don't have anything to do but to find reasons to sue you. Very important for this reason that you, you stick to the U.S. rules and regulations very carefully and make sure that you do this by uh, meeting with and taking the advice from experts who have been there. It's also essential that all of your documentation, sales contracts, descriptions of, your, of the services and, and products that you sell, are reviewed by legal counsel to make sure that they do not violate any rules and regulations. How many of you do sales through an independent sales representative in the United States? A marketing agent, perhaps? It's important to note that a sales representative, an independent sales representative, is a separate business and they are not an employee. They, they must not be treated like an employee. 
Let's take the case of a Canadian company engaged in designing, manufacturing, and the commissioning of systems that operate within the food processing industry. Being in Canada, close to the U.S., the company chose to operate from Canada, relying on independent local agents for marketing. The company remained in Canada, but they had an agent in the United States. Now, trying to control the operations from Canada did not provide the desired results. So, what are they going to do? The company decided to assign a technical person from Canada to stay stationed in the U.S. and set up operations in the U.S., ensuring growth as planned. How many in here have a relationship with a distributor in the United States, a separate business? A distributor differs from an independent sales agent. If a sales representative or a sales agent makes a commission on any sales they make, and they may actually be working for a number of different companies. A distributor is a part of the distribution of the supply chain. So you actually sell your product to the distributor. They buy it from you, mark it up, and sell it to someone else. Let's look at the case of an Indian apparel company that wanted to set up a range of stores under its own brand name in the United States. Building a brand and setting up retail stores requires a substantial investment, most of which may also be tied up long term. So to minimize investments, the company first established a subsidiary and engaged distributors to gain visibility and recognition in the product, uh, in the market. And when the platform was set for a proper launch, a senior executive from India relocated to the United States on a new office L1 visa and was able to carry out its long-term plans of setting up a range of stores under its own brand name in the United States. As you enter the United States and you want a physical presence, you'll want to consider the location, you'll want to consider zoning laws, which are very strictly enforced in the United States. Let me make a note about zoning laws. In the United States, you will find that there are office buildings and there are only service companies in that office building. You will find other office buildings and there are only medical services in that, in that building. You'll find other buildings and there are only retail shops in that building. Zoning is a way that U.S. Uh, towns, cities, organize their population into residential zones and into business zones. For example, in, in almost all cities, it is strictly illegal to conduct business from your residence. Although increasingly that's becoming difficult to enforce because we can do our business with a laptop anywhere in the world. You also want to look at these rates, distance from the target market. You want to look at transportation. How will your employees get to work? How will you get to work? How will, you, how will your customers get to your company? You will also want to look at the location of your competitors so that you are not too near from them. You'll also, you will also want to obtain the help of professionals to identify the right location for your office. And in that regard, Start Business in America can help you identify suitable space for your business and your needs. I mentioned that many people will do, want to do business from their laptop in a Starbucks or in their living room or dining room, but you may want to have a physical presence. And in that case, you will probably want to lease. You can lease space directly, or you can also share space in a business incubator. You can also sublease a desk from another company. In other words, many companies in the United States have excess space, and for a few dollars, or maybe a few hundred dollars a month, they will rent that desk or that cubicle, and then you, you share their coffee machine and their television system. Or you may want to lease 
work in a virtual office, an executive suite, where the whole business is everybody in that suite is in a different business, but you all share the same receptionist and the same office supplies. Now there are immigration considerations when you lease. Does anyone in this room have a virtual office in the United States? Does that mean you're working from your laptop when you're in the United States? Yeah. Let's say that you want to bring a business partner in from India on an L1 intra-office uh, transfer. What is the USCIS going to think if your business in the United States is a laptop? While a virtual office may serve your business needs, it may prove to be a liability in some immigration-related areas. The USCIS prefers a genuine lease of office space over a virtual or home office. This again is why it's so very important to talk to uh, an expert like Start Business in America or um, you know, an attorney who understands the U.S. laws. A company like VisaPro can help you strategize. A company like YMS People can help you staff accordingly so that you make the right decision. You may want to consider buying as opposed to leasing space. Well, if you're a small business or a service company, a lease may be preferable. But if you're in the logistics business or warehousing, uh, or manufacturing, purchasing space may be best because it gives you the stability you need to plan for the long term. You can also develop new markets by exhibiting at trade shows. How many people in this room are currently, have cur well, have recently uh, gone to a trade show, taking your product to, or service to a trade show? <coughs> Wonderful. It's an excellent way to enter the U.S. market. U.S. trade shows offer Indian companies an attractive gateway to reaching their target U.S. markets, customers, and industry facilitators. For example, by participating in a U.S. trade show, an Indian leather manufacturing company was able to showcase their products to U.S. Uh, customers directly. Additionally, the trade show will also give them an opportunity to network and establish business tie-ups with industry intermediaries like wholesalers and importers. Start Business in America can show you how various trade shows um, can help you learn about various trade shows and how they will relate to your business. Now, the B-1 visa is generally appropriate for this type of travel, but may at times be difficult to obtain because of previous abuses. So, uh, again, I would refer you to Thomas Joy, who will be speaking shortly. He has had 100% success in achieving the B-1 visa. I also encourage you to contact Visa Pro or Start My Visa to obtain timely U.S. visas. Now, has anyone in this room ever been refused a D1 visa? Thomas Joy will be able to help you with that, and the mock interview this afternoon will be very helpful. I want to make one comment about selling over the internet. How many of you are familiar with the with Amazon.com? It's the largest retailer in the United States. That is, internet retail, retailer. The state of California in the United States has recently ruled that Amazon.com must collect California sales tax on all sales made to citizens of the state of California. This may spread. It is also, this means that governments are increasingly regulating what is happening over the internet. So it's very important that you engage the services of a competent U.S. attorney to review your website 
And you should also identify any intellectual property on that site to protect your rights. Also, any claims that you make must be true and factual. And again, in turn, they should be reviewed by an attorney to make sure that you are not going to get into any problems. You want to write all privacy and terms of use that comply with U.S. law. We recommend that you establish your business in the state where you are going to do business, unless there is a compelling tax reason to do so in another state. Now, typically an IT or a software company may, might want to relocate to Silicon Valley, California, or to New Jersey, or some other high-tech hub. However, for logistic companies and warehouses, you may want to be near the border of Canada or the border of Mexico to the south. Um, where you locate depends on what you want to do and other considerations. It does not mean that you have to re register your business in the state where you want to do business. You can, regulate, you can register in any state and do business in any state. However, to protect yourself, you probably want to do you will want to register as a foreign corporation in every other state where you do business. A personal note, I have a business in the United States that does business in about 20 different states. I'm primarily registered, my corporation is registered in California. However, I'm registered in, a, in every state where I collect money, where I actually perform a business transaction. This gives me legal protection in the, in the event that I'm sued in, the other, in another state. It gives me the opportunity to protect myself in my home state and not have to go to the other state. There are several forms that your business can take. A sole proprietorship is the automatic form of business. Everyone in the United States with a, sole, with a social security number, which you generally get shortly after birth, is a business, just by default. Several people joining together and pooling their funds and profits are a partnership. These are the least secure types of business, sole proprietorship and general partnerships. There are several types of corporations, S Corp and C Corp, and your attorney can advise you on the best. Um, a corporation is registered with the state where you're doing business. A limited liability company performs the same function as a corporation, but is a little easier to navigate and, and to maintain. And there are also various forms of joint ventures that you may want to enter into. You should consult legal and accounting professionals to determine which is the right form for you. Although, for immigration purposes, I would say that you want to have a separate uh, subsidiary, either as a corporation or an LLC, for most purposes. Various factors will dictate the best form of business, including capital needs, type of business, nature of ownership, tax considerations, and immigration considerations. If you wish to take advantage of the L1 visa, for example, we recommend corporate and LLC. Now, how many in this room have a U.S. branch office? Not a registered corporation or an LLC, but a branch of your Indian business in the United States. I see one or two. How many have a separate subsidiary, a registered corporation or an LLC? Many more. Excellent. Excellent. In general, a foreign company establishing a branch may conduct the same types of business in the same way as a subsidiary, uh, as a U.S. subsidiary company. However, operating as a U.S. branch of a foreign company may expose the parent company to legal risks. Operating as a subsidiary corporation or LLC insulates the foreign company from legal claims in the U.S. against the foreign. An example, your branch in the United States manufactures a product and the product somehow harms somebody. Maybe you make a lawnmower 
and somebody runs over somebody else's toes with the lawnmower, or the lawnmower malfunctions, <coughs> your Indian company can be sued by the armed party in the United States if all you have is a branch. But if you have a subsidiary that is a corporation or a limited liability company, that is a separate company. And the lawsuit will be against the U.S. branch, the U.S. subsidiary, but will not extend here to the company in India. The company in India is simply a shareholder. Maybe you own all the shares, but you're simply a shareholder of the U.S. branch or the U.S. subsidiary. Let's look a little bit at banking and funding. Funding options um, are both, well, first of all, when you have money, you have to set up a U.S. bank account. And that is increasingly difficult for a number of reasons. So again, your attorney can help you do that. To open a U.S. bank account, you need an employer identification number. You can open a U.S. bank account if you're a foreign uh, citizen, but it is difficult. We call the number that we get, before you open a bank account, you need an employer identification number or a federal tax ID number. They're both two names for the same thing. This is the number that you use when you file your U.S. taxes. U.S. Uh, financial, the U.S. financial marketplace offers many options for Indian companies to obtain funding. There is equity funding and there is debt funding. Equity funding is typically provided by investment banks and by venture capital firms. I recommend that if you are a startup or a small company that you avoid venture capital firms. It will take too big a bite out of your company and they're very expensive. Um, if you cannot obtain money from an investment bank, you may want to consider a commercial bank for an asset-based loan. Asset-based loans use collateral. In other words, if you have assets, you offer that as security. For example, if you're looking for a short-term fund for short-term funding and you have assets to be offered as security, you may look at an asset-based financing or a term loan from a commercial bank to meet the funding requirements. The U.S. government also has funding uh, opportunities through the Small Business Administration. SBA loans are available to foreign-owned companies as well as U.S.-based companies that have incorporated in the United States. Again, another reason to form a subsidiary as a corporation or an LLC. Indian companies are advised to make sure that they are guided and supported during the process of, of obtaining funding by a financial expert and attorneys.